The recent purging of Alpine's management team has left a big hole that needs filling, but when it comes to Formula 1 team bosses, there are very few people qualified to take on the role. Especially in Alpine's case, where the team is so unstable that a seasoned and steady hand is needed to hold them together and get them back on track. They need someone experienced with managing a big team, someone who has experience of the board trying to be involved in everything that's happening, someone who knows how to deal with two closely matched drivers competing to prove themselves. Apparently, they need Mattia Binotto. Is the ex-Ferrari boss on the way back to Formula 1? Why don't you stick around and find out? In the space of just 10 minutes on a dramatic Friday afternoon at Spa, Alpine parted way with not one, not two, but three senior figures. With team principal Otmar Safnauer, sporting director Alan Permain, and chief technical officer Pat Fry leaving the French team. These are the latest firings in a crazy month for Alpine, which began with the team securing a 200 million euro cash injection from a group of investors including Hollywood actor Ryan Reynolds. It's the latest overhaul in a tumultuous five-year period for Renault, which became Alpine in 2021. Since 2018, team principal Cyril Abitabal, executive director Marcin Budkowski, technical director Nick Chester, chief technical officer Bob Bell, head of aerodynamics Peter Maschin, engine chief Remy Taffin, and perhaps most significantly team advisor Alain Prost have all left. David Brivio spent just one year as racing director, having come from MotoGP, before being moved away from the F1 program. While the team lost drivers Oscar Piastri to McLaren for this season and Fernando Alonso to Aston Martin, Alpine are an absolute shambles, and with a management team made of spare parts and duct tape, they're on the edge of breaking. Fortunately for them, though, they seem to have at least found a solution to their team principal problem. Alpine could have a new full-time team principal after the summer break, as rumors of Mattia Binotto joining the squad seem to spread like wildfire. Binotto's experience and credentials make him an ideal candidate for the role. Having served as the director of Ferrari's engine department, technical director and team principal as well, Mattia possesses extensive expertise in both the engine and overall design of the single-seater as well as in managing a Formula 1 team that manufactures engines and chassis. His most pertinent skill for the Alpine job will be his political know-how. Having contended with the Ferrari political structure since 1995, he knows how to keep a power-hungry and overly involved board happy while doing his job to the best of his ability. Ferrari did eventually make the surprising decision to dismiss Mattia Binotto in 2022, after the team's title challenge fizzled out, but if half a season of results under Fred Vasseur are to be used as a comparison, Mattia was not the problem. F1 legend Martin Brundle said that he wouldn't be surprised if Binotto ended up securing a position, agreeing that he could be great in the Alpine job. Binotto has a lot of experience, particularly in the Ferrari system, and he knows what it takes to run a Formula 1 team. Although things didn't work out for him at Ferrari, otherwise he'd still be there. I wouldn't be surprised if that appointment was announced. Alpine aren't the first team to come asking for Mattia's help. Audi had plans of signing Mattia Binotto soon after Ferrari sacked him at the end of a dismal 2022 season. The report also adds that Binotto took a tour of Audi's Nürburgring base. However, the report states that he was far from impressed, as he also went to the extent of referring to the Audi managers as clowns. While Binotto did not seem impressed with Audi, it seems that Alpine have managed to show him some promise, due to which he is reportedly all set to sign with them. The rumors of Mattia heading to Alpine after the summer break are happening despite reports suggesting that the 53-year-old still has to serve his gardening leave for the rest of this year. It is thought that Ferrari paid Mattia $3 million to do nothing related to Formula 1 for the 2023 season. If this agreement is true, the Italian, as per the contract, cannot join any other team until the beginning of the next season, as Ferrari can take legal action. Experienced engineers are usually put on gardening leave to prevent them from carrying the knowledge of their previous teams to the new team they're joining. After a year or so of leave, that information is likely to be outdated and unhelpful to the new team. However, if their former employers give them permission to join another team, then the employees can join a rival. This seems to be the case with Bonotto, as he edges closer to completing a move to Alpine. There does seem to be more to this than just rumors created to fill the four-week hole in the calendar. A report from La Auto Journal in France says that Bonotto was at the Belgian Grand Prix weekend and stayed for the post-race Pirelli tyre test and was seen in conversation with the Alpine team. If this is true, Alpine might have had Mattia lined up when they pulled the trigger on Otmar's firing. Respected Ferrari journalist Leo Torini 
wouldn't be surprised if a deal had already been struck for Bonotto to take the reins at Alpine, adding that great things could be on the horizon for him there. In France, they say Bonotto already has the agreement with Alpine. I wouldn't be surprised, Torini wrote. I've known Mattia for almost 30 years. He's a great guy, perhaps undermined by an excess of self-esteem. He had the Ferrari GP team in his hands for a few years. It was his dream come true. If he finds in DeMeo a mentor, and if he learns to listen more, he could do great things. If Mattia does join Alpine after the summer break, then he has a hell of a job on his hands. Ultimately, Alpine have so far this season failed to live up to the Renault Group CEO Luca DeMeo's lofty expectations. The French team finished fourth last year, and DeMeo expected them to match that finish in 2023, and, more importantly, slash the performance gap to the big three, Red Bull, Mercedes, and Ferrari. However, that goal looked near impossible from race one, with the team having gone backwards into sixth in the Constructors' Championship after being leapfrogged convincingly by Aston Martin and McLaren. There have been a string of operational errors, reliability has been below par, and the rate of development has fallen significantly short of targets. Then there is the engine, which Mattia may be able to help with. It's understood that the Renault E-Tech RE23 has a deficit over the rest of the grid, some reports saying it could be as much as 30 brake horsepower. That has led for the team pushing for the equalization of power units. One of Mattia's first points of action will be trying to convince the rest of the team principals to let his team improve its power unit to within touching distance of the other three currently in use. That will require handing over large amounts of data to prove how far behind they are though, and then show that they haven't improved the engine's performance beyond that of the rest of the grid. As it stands, there is a freeze on PU development with only changes for reliability permitted. The deficit has been quoted as bad as being 0.3 seconds per lap. At circuits like Silverstone, that swells to 0.4 seconds. At the slow-speed Hungara rink, it's closer to 0.1 seconds apparently. The underperforming engine is causing the team problems elsewhere, as they try to compensate for it. The raw pace of the chassis has disappointed senior executives. In the middle sector at Spa alone, the car is one second down on the best lap. Sources say DeMeo believes the senior leaders in the team are responsible for the deficit, and has not accepted their reasoning for why the team is in its current position. He is known to be a tough taskmaster and demanded more when he met them in recent weeks. He doesn't just want the new team principal to get them back to where they were. He has much bigger dreams for the team. The Alpine F1 team will become the French Ferrari, begins De Mayo. In France, there is still too little passion for Formula 1. The reason is that French people do not have a symbol to cheer for like Italy has with Ferrari. In the past, De Mayo worked at Fiat, where he was responsible for the market launch of the then-revamped Fiat 500, and he takes this project as an example of what he wants to achieve with Alpine. Our goal is to link Alpine's colors with feelings of passion, as we did with the Fiat 500 at the time. The idea is to tie history to these colors and thus create commitment, DeMeo said. If Mattia is to make the move to Alpine, there will be a weight of expectation on him, but having come from Ferrari, he'll know how to handle that. We may joke about the Ferrari clown wall on race days under Bonotto, but he is well respected on the grid still and may just be the ingredient Alpine need to turn their fortunes around. Do you think Mattia Bonotto will succeed at Alpine? Or are the team beyond help at this point? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.